Hi, I'm Jennifer Branch. I recently did a watercolor portrait of my son and I thought some of you would be very interested in seeing some of the paint mixing and other things that goes into a watercolor portrait because it's so much different than oil portraits. Watercolor portraits are pretty much the opposite of oil portraits. So it's they're really fun to do and I think they are perfect for painting children or lighthearted scenes just very relaxed compared to oil portraits. Oil portraits seem more stiff and formal to me and this is not a full demonstration this is a partial demonstration that should give you some inspiration for painting some of your loved ones in watercolor. Let's paint. I'm using Arches cold press paper and just having some fun with a squirrel mop. The in-between texture of cold press paper is perfect for this because it allows enough bright colors, but I still have that little bit of texture. And I am just using some of the same colors that I'm going to be using in the actual skin color of the portrait um, and playing around with the background. So that's all pretty much wet and wet. And here I am going in and shaping the face. So I'm taking the main shapes of the place, the main planes, the cheeks, the eye sockets, the mouth area and all of that. And I am basically modeling it just like with the paintbrush, just the same as you'd model with clay. Think about it like that it's um, so I'm not doing the actual feature of the lips I am shaping the area around the lips um, and here just playing around with the chicken there uh, using some uh, Quinn rust and a little bit of cobalt violet and uh, basically the same colors I've used all over the painting so I'm just moving the same palette around. And the chicken, it really, I don't want that much there. It's there because it was hilarious and cute. I was sketching on my driveway, sketching the azaleas behind there. And he came up with the chicken and just looked so proud and had such a great smirk on his face. And I had to take a picture. And of course, I had to paint it. So this is really the point is the hands clutching the chicken and I'm using a lot more pinks because the palm is showing and just going in and just doing the main points of the hand. Now this is the second wash. I'm going to use three washes. I never paint more than three washes on a portrait. If it needs more, it's time to start over. So this is the second wash and I'm going in and doing the hollows of the eyes. You know how, um, how skulls have the, the hollow areas? Well, all this area is shadowed and maybe the eyelids um, catch a little bit of light. Maybe they don't. It really depends on the person's actual features and individual's features, but that entire area is shadowed. But we don't want them to look like they have a black eye right? That, that's not great. So we went very warm. So it needs to have enough depth where it looks, it's shaped, but it's still very, very warm. So I'm going in and doing everything around that area. And some of it I will blur more, some of it I won't. So just a little bit of a wet brush, blur those edges. And I usually work on one eye at a time because it um, has to be done pretty quickly because you're wanting some of it blurred. And notice I haven't started by drawing in the pupil. I'm going to get to the iris nail, but first it was the area around the eye socket. And then it was the little bit closer in and now it's the iris and very at the end of this little session it'll be the pupil 
So take your time and save the detail areas for last and don't fuss too much with them in the second wash. The fussing is for the third wash. Looks kind of weird with one eye, right? Don't worry, I'll work on the next. Usually want to have one eye a little bit more in focus than the other. And generally the eyes will be more in focus and just crisper than the rest of the painting. Sometimes it's the mouth. Uh, it really just depends. But the eye most of the time would be more in focus than the rest of it. And ears are extremely individual. Um, the shapes of the, uh, not the features, but the planes of the face just make an individual look like that individual. And the ears are as important as any of those. So keep that in mind. Draw your ears carefully. Don't just do a generic ear. They really change per person and they completely change the face. So here I'm shaping the other eye socket. So I'm deepening that shadow. You know, it's, it's the exact same colors as I used in the background. Tiny bit more detail. There's the area underneath. I'm sorry, but everyone has a shadow under their eye, even children. <laughs> Remember, proportions change with children. So look at who you're painting and don't just do the eyes around the, the center and, you know, don't do this by routine because this is one place drawing matters. In most things, landscapes, you know, I say just scribble it and if it's vaguely in the right place, you, you're good to go. But this matters. You have to get the drawing right. And it isn't so much the features. The features matter, but the shapes of the, the planes of the face, that, that's where recognition happens. So, you know, it isn't, is the eyeball right? It's, is the eye socket right? Is the cheekbone right? Is that angle right? And even then, you know, it, every detail really does need to be thought out. And I usually do paint portraits two or three times. Um, and I've been painting portraits professionally for a very long time. And it takes a few goes. Not a big deal. Okay, so under the nose... You um, you do not want to paint every nose hair, right? Nostrils, big hole in your nose, not necessarily the most attractive part of it. But you have to have that shape correct. So a lot of times there's a warm reflected light. This is, I'm on my driveway, so light concretes. And the light is reflecting very warm on the bottom of the nose, um, the ears, the bottom of the chin, the bottom of the, the top part of the eye socket um, where that face is down. So all these are very, very warm and that will change with lighting. Most of the time it will be fairly warm because this, these are all areas um, the blood vessels are pretty close to the skin. So, and there's a lot of them. And the irises and pupils of the eyes, in this case, I didn't use gouache, but sometimes I'll use gouache, sometimes I won't. I usually try to limit gouache to maybe highlights on the eyes, highlights on the cheek, anything like that, um, because children have that wonderful translucent skin and you want to keep that very light. I don't care what the color of your skin is, the of the your subject is, but it's still very translucent um, in comparison to an adult skin um, 
And so you want to keep the layers down to the minimum amount of layers. So I'm going back with my third and final layer on this. Just the corner to make, to round the eye. And I'm really doing those details. Now I'm going to go back with water and brush to blur it a bit. And this wash layer is where you're going to do all of your details. Um, oh, a note on the hair. It, take a look at the hair. The hair is usually not just brown or blonde or red or black or whatever the color is. It usually reflects what's around it. And if it's an outdoor one, you'll be surprised at how much blue or purple or green is in the hair. So that's, that's kind of fun to realize and fun to paint. Some bright red on the ears. Now the detail of the mouth. And remember before it was just shaping it. So he is completely smirking in this. Very proud. His job title is chicken wrangler, which means he overfeeds the chickens and runs around after them and protects them from harm. It's a very, very honorable chicken title, I guess. So I'm using all the same color here and then I'm going to um, bleed in a few other colors and blur some edges and emphasize the cheeks. See, it, it happens very gradually. Don't want every edge painted there. And after some fussing, here's the finished painting. Thank you so much for watching this. If you have any information you'd like to see on paint colors or anything else, it's on my website, paintingwatercolor.com, as well as a couple other complete uh, portrait tutorials and links to that, some YouTube, some not. And I hope this inspires you to paint someone you love this week in watercolor. Happy painting. <laughs>